Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave looking at you through uh, one set of uh, binocular magnifiers that I have and use. Uh, I like these magnifiers because they give me a reasonable working distance from my work, but magnifiers are a tricky business. Uh, everyone has the kind of set that they feel comfortable with. Uh, over the years, I have come to really love and respect the simplicity of the simple fold down flat magnifiers and you can add to them by uh, by by doubling them up as I have here because I needed to do something that was very close. And this is a much closer uh, uh, working distance. Those are surgeon's binoculars that I was using before. Uh, these are great for model making and the light on top is just an extra mm, piece de resistance. But, but, wait, let me put these away. I already shot a video about magnifiers and we'll include a link in the description. But this video is about a new magnifier I have just brought into the shop and I have not even unboxed it. So that's what this is gonna be. Hold on, I'm gonna give you a better camera angle. I'm really excited about this. So I became, uh, I guess I became aware of the power of the digital microscope watching uh, Wristwatch Revival, one of my favorite YouTube channels. Um, on that channel, Marshall, the, the proprietor of that channel, fixes, repairs, uh, re restores old and new watches. Uh, and you mostly, you never see his face. You just see his hands and the incredible, beautiful close-ups of the watches he's repairing. And I just became obsessed with having that capability. Uh, and uh, I found this for not too much money. I bought it. It's more than your standard run-of-the-mill uh, electronic microscope on Amazon. Uh, but its reviews sort of led me to led me to feel like that was worth it. Uh, I do a lot of review reading. I do a lot of assessing whether I'm reading real reviews or not. Uh, and you know, at a certain point, I feel like I've got enough of a point of view and a clarity on the issue that I feel like I can pull the trigger. And on this one, I did. I have high hopes that I got it right. Uh, so clearly, we have a, a stalk for holding up. Uh-huh, uh-huh, I see, I see, I see. All right, so then, I mean, I probably, yes, clearly. Uh-huh, clearly that's supposed to go like that. Well, that sets your bottom. Uh, and this is adjustable so I can, yeah, so I can set that, um, right? I can move this in or out, and then this gives me fine control. Well, that's a little unfortunate, but I can probably re-machine a piece there if I feel like I need it. Um, all right, there's that. There's a remote control. This looks like the microscope and monitor is all one freaking unit, which is kind of neat. Oh, and this one comes with more than one lens. And that was the other thing I really liked about it was that uh, it had multiple options for magnification. So let's just break everything out. Let's see what, oh wow, there's slides to look at, neato. There. Break everything out. Assess and assemble. Oh, it's already working. We've already, okay, hold on a second. I think I need to bring you, I think I need to bring you over here. This is lens A. Its working distance is, uh, no, sorry, is 12 to 320 millimeters. Nice. Um, 
Oh, wow, that's very adjustable, and I can turn it on and off with this. That's great. Oh, there we go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, oh, oh. Look at my filthy fingernails. Oh, how glorious. Glorious. Amazing. I can turn this down a little bit. Yeah, it's a John Wick coin. Oh my gosh, that's great. This is awesome. So I can raise this even higher and give myself a wider field of view. And I can adjust the camera. Swap this out. Swap this out for this Elgin that I have. This lovely Elgin watch. Gorgeous. Lovely. And I can come. Yeah, I can come in here and take a look nice and close up. This, uh, you know what? So it comes with a 32 gigabyte flash card. I'm gonna pop that in there. Yes. So we can start with this guy. Ooh, pretty. Here we go. Look at my filthy fingers. Here, you can actually see my finger that I got stuck in the lathe there. There's a, sorry, you don't need to see that. Anyway, that's the John Wick coin. But let's toss in my Elgin watch here. And we can use the, uh, yeah, we can come up even further. That's lovely. And I can also come down. Actually, I can even come down further. Ooh, whoops. And we can bring it into focus here. Oh, yeah, look at that. Ooh, beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Amazing. All right. Um, I would like to, let's bring this up. I can already see that there are many ways in which I want to modify this to play with it. But for right now, we're just getting to know to use it as a machine. Um, I'm going to want to open the back of this Elgin. I'm also going to, well, this crystal is totally cracked, so I don't mind laying it on its face. And here you go. Oh, look at how pretty. I think that's actually working. Oh, no, it's not quite working. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, this is a uh, train conductor's pocket watch I picked up a million years ago and thought was totally broken, but it actually seems to be moving. You know, it's funny. Uh, this, so this is all part and parcel because I want to, I'd like to repair this watch. I'd like to repair some of my other watches. And after watching a lot of Marshall on wristwatch revival, I decided to buy one of these microscopes and see if it could be useful to me in doing this. And uh, reader, I am a hundred percent like committed. This is amazing. I can see all sorts of ways in which this needs a much better interface between me and the machine, but that is easy to implement. And it's just about like solidifying and making the rig a little more robust, which is totally gonna happen. I can't believe this thing is running. That's crazy. Uh, and hopefully we'll get, well, you know, hopefully, I have been assembling some watchmaking tools over the years in the hopes of getting to this point and 
doing some really lovely work. And I want to come in and look much closer if I can. Let's see here. Look at that. Safety pinion. Three, four, eight, eight, seven, two, eight. You can see the um, you can see the the tops of the jeweled movements here. Well, actually, no, I don't know if those are jeweled movements. That certainly is. Um, Elgin National Watch Company. We've got the fast and slow settings here. That's for adjusting the timing. Oh, look at my big dumb finger. That's amazing. Elgin, Illinois. Um, let's turn this over. Actually, let's uh, let's cover it. Dude, I'm starting to think this might be a pocket watch again someday. And there it is, actually. Counting down some seconds. I don't have one of those fancy machines that tells me how fast or slow a watch is, but I want one now. Um, look at how beautiful that is. The uh, Even the cracking on the porcelain on that face is really quite, quite beautiful, quite lovely. Um, you can see the blue steel of the hands there. Oh man, that is super cool. I could really get used to seeing the world from this vantage point. Okay, I wanna try uh, another lens. There it is, oh wow. That is the center of the hands. If we go down to the second hand, come on. See it spinning. Look at how dirty. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's great. See the second hand passing by. Doo. Gorgeous. 40 seconds coming up. You can even see, wow, you can even see the dimensionality of the printing on the face here. You can see the reflection off the five there and the zero. You can see that it has, wow. Oh, wow, wait, 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 wait. Do I need to do a ceramic diamond in here? Okay, I wanna bring in something else. Oh, that's a project, isn't it? That will be a project. Um, I wanna, I, a fan painted up this, uh, this 3D. Oh, wow, I need to go way up. Oh, 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 there comes, Mr. Savage comes into focus. <laughs> yeah, there he is. So that head, look at that, that's great. That head is, um, I'm to show you what I'm to call that head. That is roughly 3.5, 0 0.35. So it's just a shade under three eighths of an inch tall, the head here. Um, and actually you can see all sorts of wonderful detail, detail built into this resin print. There's my little helmet, the lights on it. There's my little hand and a glove. There's the other, oh, somebody broke off the thumb. That was me. I did that. Um, hilarious. This is amazing. Oh my gosh. I can totally imagine like a million and one uses for this thing. Not least of which though is this bad boy, which is freaking working, which is ridiculous. Um, right. There's one more slide. There is one more slide. So uh, let's, um, let's pause there. Great. It's telling me up here how many hours I have left on that card, which is lovely. So let's um let's move this out. We'll move this out, and um, we'll set up the third lens with the uh, with the with the slides. So let's uh bring that up and bring this down because it's a very small photo. And 
we're going to pull out some of these slides that they have given us. We have a pine stem. We have epidermis of an onion. Okay. We have a honeybee wing. Oh, yeah, that's what we're looking at, honeybee wing. There's just no contest there. All right, so let's uh, bring this into focus if we can. Oh my gosh, what? Oh, right, okay, so let's uh, bring this back up for uh, posterity. We'll start recording, okay. Whoa. Oh, what? I'm focusing on different, wow. Look at the little tiny hairs. Look at the little tiny hairs. Honeybee wing. Honeybee wing. All right, let's try a different one. All right, that's as high as it goes. That is as high as it goes. And that is, oh wow, look, it's actually a little bit broken. So focus can be done by raising it up and down and also with the focus knob. Look at those little hairs. Look at that. Incredible. That's the little sticker at the end of his feet right there, that little nodule. So if I lower this down, I can keep it in focus as we examine deeper. This is great. Amazing. Okay, let's take a look at the onion epidermis. Ooh. All right, let's get some focus going. Yeah. Oh, babe. Babe, <laughs> I say big. <laughs> no idea. Compound I. Okay, let's take a look at that. There we go. Come on up. What? Oh my gosh. Okay, so let's go up and we can keep on focusing. That is a compound I. Muska. Domestica compound I. What is a Musca Domestica? Hold on. I know some of you know it and are yelling it at the screen. Uh, I'm going to guess it's a housefly. Domestica sounds like housefly. Let's see. Housefly! Got it right! <laughs> This is the compound eye of a house fly. Is that really? Wow. All right. I'm uh, I'm hooked. Let's just there's, there's no there's no two ways about it. I am totally hooked and I can turn down the brightness or I can turn it up. Amazing. Yeah, I am super psyched. This thing is so freaking cool. Uh, we'll include a link to the one that I bought in the description. Uh, and uh, yeah. She still runs. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll get to that. Um, plus, I mean, there is a huge, as far as I'm concerned, there is a big one day build in refining the operation of this arrangement. Um, yeah, yeah. Ooh, I have an idea forming in my brain. Bold drink. Um, 
look at that. That's a Musca Domestica compound eye loading. That sounds like a mistranslation of some kind, which can be expected. I believe this uh, machine is Chinese in its birthplace or Taiwanese. I'm not sure. Let's see here. No, no, no. Uh, oh. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and uh, I really like this nice big screen. I like how bright it is. Oh, I don't even need to keep recording. I can stop. There we go. Now we've got two files on the card. Four hours and 54 minutes at this resolution left for recording. This is great. I'm really, really happy. Um, oh, right. I wanted to finish. Well, I wanted to finish. Oh, no, I don't. It's not an automatic. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah, that's good. This is a good finish. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, I will see you all next time. Hey guys, Adam Savage from Tested here. If you've ever seen the six inch ruler in inches and centimeters on my forearm and wanted one of your own, but you didn't want it to be permanent, well, today's your lucky day. You can now buy temporary tattoos of my measuring stick, my measuring forearm uh, at tested-store.com. Comes like this, goes on in about 30 seconds with a little water. The instructions are on the back. It comes off with rubbing alcohol and hopefully it warms you up to the idea of permanently attaching a measuring device to your body because I use mine every single day.